So how do we find the equation from a graph? We're talking about cosine or sine or some sinusoidal. We're going to find the equation for the graph, that one. All right. So we look and find the amplitude because it's sine and cosine, so it has an amplitude. Looks like it strays far from the asymptote, one far. So then that's plus and minus one. So the amplitude is one. Now what? We're looking for the period. We can. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Back that math up. If I'm looking at these first two, right there, boom, no, there, I see that those are pi far away. The period is the time that it takes to repeat. The time that it takes to repeat. So it looks like it repeats every pi, but we don't have to check it there. We can check it at its high points too. And that's what's going on here. That's the high point happens at 3 pi over 4 and minus 3 pi over 4. So if we subtract the two, we see that our period's pi. Yeah, no matter where we perform our period, it's going to be pi. So since our period for sine or cosine is 2 pi, two pi over b, then we can let 2 pi over b be pi. And then b be 2. Ooh, some algebra happened. Now let's make our equation for that guy. Is it a sine or is it a cosine? We see it starts at zero, so I'm just going to call it a sine. Could I call it a cosine? Sure, they are, what do you call it, co-functions? I would just have an adjustment of pi over two. <clears throat> so now, it's a flip sine. It's a flip sine, because it's upside down. Oh man, I wish I could put my emoji for the upside down face in here. So then, if I'm looking at the basic shape, doesn't look like it shifted at all. Could I have made a shift one? Sure, I could have. And doesn't look like I have a, a phase shift either. So let me just get rid of that part, and then I'm putting the amplitude in there as minus one. It's minus one because it's flipped. And then I put my B in there too, and I'd be done. Box and flower. Bye.